If you were to ask me, what are your favorite light modifiers? I would always default back to anything that helps me to control light. Things like grids, snoots, barn doors, all of that. So today we're gonna to walk around downtown Orange. I'm gonna show you three simple techniques using these modifiers. What's up guys, welcome to SR Lounge. My name is Pi, this is my friend Sabrina. So check this out. I like shooting with small and portable gear and my favorite modifiers are just light control modifiers. Things like grids, snoots, barn doors, and Profoto just came out with a new set of these. So I'm gonna pair them with the A2. The cool thing about them is they're tiny, but you can use the same techniques regardless of the gear you're using. So let's get to actually our first spot. I wanna show you guys first how to use the grid. We're at our first spot. I'm gonna use the grid here to kind of highlight subtly our subject. I'm gonna show you the technique, but first, why don't we talk through the composition, what I'm kind of digging about this. I have Sabrina placed against this wall and I love the way that this shop kind of looks. We have this nice pattern texture here, it's simple, but then there's also these textures where like the paint's peeling off and it looks fantastic in a photograph. We also have complementary colors to what Sabrina's actually wearing. So it looks fantastic. She just posed right against the wall. Why don't we start with kind of composition? Let's work through camp and uh, do everything how we typically would. So I'm gonna set this to F7.1 ish, one two of a second. And I'm not normally one to like lean on just rule of thirds, but here it works. So we're not gonna fight it. It's cliche, but when it works, it works. And I dig it. Sabrina looks fantastic. The background looks great. I love the way that this looks, but Sometimes I wanna add a little bit of accentuation to the subject. And so what I'll do is this. I got the Profoto A2 up on the stand. One of my favorite techniques is to place the light kind of exactly in the direction where the sun's coming from. So the sun's right there. I'm gonna place this right here. We're gonna boom it up a bit. And by the way, when we're working outside and it's bright, just a simple rule of thumb, keep your uh, flash at full power. We're gonna leave it at 10. That's kind of my starting point when it's bright outside. So with that, this is also why, by the way, I set my shutter speed to 1 200th, so that way I get full flash power. I'm not using high-speed sync right now. I'm gonna go ahead and start to underexpose a little bit. So now, and this is just with the light itself, and we're not using uh, any grid right now, right? You'll notice, actually, if we compare it to that prior shot, that the shadow is very similar because it's coming from a direction that is very close to where the sun is. I'd have to boom it up just a little bit more to get it there. But you'll also see that it's lighting the entire wall the same way the sun might, right? This is where a grid is awesome. So what I'm gonna do is pop the new click grid onto it. It's just a simple magnetic accessory that pops on really easy. And I'm actually gonna bring this up a little bit to kind of match that direction of sunlight. And the honeycomb pattern on that grid is gonna prevent the light from spilling against the rest of the wall. It's gonna really highlight just Sabrina. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna ask Sabrina, do you see the light behind the honeycomb? Is it pointed directly at you or do you see black? Okay, so I'm gonna aim it down a little bit. You tell me when you see more white versus less. Right there. It's kind of my favorite way to make that adjustment so I don't have to like run back and forth. Just tell me when you see white, then it's in the right position. Okay, hop into that same pose, Sabrina. In fact, we're gonna go hand in the pocket. I like the hand in the pocket, yeah. Turn the chin a little bit to this side, brush the hair all together, and let's go before the sun pops back out again. Right there. And now this go around, instead of lighting the entire wall, we just kind of add highlights to Sabrina where the light is naturally coming from. What I love about this technique is once we take it into post, I can exaggerate those highlights however I'd like. I can pull the background down a little more, lift Sabrina a little bit up, and that's the beauty of putting the grid on there and controlling where the light's landing because in post, we can have really specific control over it. Okay, let's go and find another technique. We found our next spot, a parking lot. I love shooting in parking lots, but now it's time for technique two. We're gonna use the snoot. You can kind of think of the snoot as a higher power grid. So it's gonna funnel the light into more of a tight circular pattern. I'm gonna show you how I like to use it. I actually have the flash already set up right here, but I wanna walk through this step-by-step. Step. We're gonna do a couple things. We're gonna also add a click gel, a half CTO and the snoot, but I wanna show you what I'm going for. So first, why don't we just start with natural light the overall composition. I'm shooting pretty shallow F2. I'm gonna go roughly around 35 millimeters. I'm at one 200 of a second just to get a nice exposure. This is really 
more so exposed for skin than anything. And I get this shot of Sabrina, which looks, I think that looks fantastic already, right? What I love about this from a composition standpoint, again, always think composition first, right? is I love the leading lines of the wall that drops into her. We're using this kind of shrub on the left side as a little bit of foreground. And I like that it kind of gets brighter towards the center of the frame where I have her positioned. So now we need to lean into all this. I wanna add a little bit of extra interest by putting some extra dimensionality into that light, maybe adding a little pattern on the wall. Let me show you where I have the flash. I've placed the A2. This is a 100 watt flash, by the way. It's on a stand and positioning wise, it's kind of behind and going through these trees because what I wanna do is kinda of create light patterns that come through the trees, create a little bit of dimensionality to the overall scene. Right now, it's bare bulb and it's set to full power so you guys can get a look and see what it's gonna do. I'm gonna take the exact same shot. I'm gonna do my best with the framing. And this is what we get, and I like it, but I do kinda of notice that the flash is hitting a little bit too much of those columns in the back. I'm getting more pattern than I really want on the wall, plus it's a little bit bright. What I'm gonna do also is I'm gonna shift the color. So I'm gonna start actually with just the half CTO gel to shift the color so we get a little bit more warmth with this light, kind of like it's the sun. Let's take that same shot again. Okay, now we get a much more pleasing tone to that light. And I love the half CTO because if I go full CTO, not only losing more light, but the orange might be just a little bit too intense. Now this is where I could use really either. If I want a more tight pattern, I use the snoot, but if I want the light to open up a bit more, I can just use like the grid, right? Let's go ahead and use the snoot here though. Going back to that same spot. I love that. That snoot controls the light. If you compare it to that last shot, not only we're we not hitting the columns and everything else, but it tightens up the pattern of those trees to a little spot to the right of Sabrina, where I feel like there's this great negative space that could just use a little bit of added interest. So this is one of my favorite ways of using a snoot. Of course, you can do this in a variety of different ways. You can just shoot that straight up circular pattern, do fun stuff with that too. But this is maybe something a little bit different that gives you some ideas. Let's go on to the next one. Final technique, this time we have a barn door. Now, why would you need a barn door in addition to your grid and snoot that already help you to control light? Number one, Look at how cute and small this thing is. It's definitely worth having. No, seriously though, barn doors are kind of an in-between. It's gonna give me ability to control where the light's going by kind of controlling these little panels on it. But also I'm gonna get more flash output than I would with like a grid or a snoot that's gonna cut down the light coming out of my flash. Let's go ahead and show you. I'm gonna use it again for kind of a more subtle effect here. You can use these creatively to create light patterns directly on your subject. But here, I wanna show you a little more of a refined look. Let's talk composition first, and I'm gonna show you where the light is placed and why it's placed there. So I'm at one 250th of a second, F2 and low ISO. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of framing Sabrina right in the center of the frame with the highlights, that car's saying hello to us, with the highlights of the glass kind of directly behind her. So it kind of frames the face. We get this beautiful image and it looks nice, it looks natural. And by the way, I can kind of control the angle depending on how much of the background that I kind of want to see. If I want to see less, I could take more of an angle like this, where it's kind of just shooting her with the brick wall as well. But I don't know. I like the little extra depth that we get framing her right there, and I don't mind seeing the edge of the scene. I love the first image that we created, but I want to add a little bit of dimension to the light. So what I've done here is I've placed the A2 just on a stand directly behind Sabrina and kind of off to the right a little bit. It's at eight power, so that's like one quarter power. I'm gonna take the shot right there. Let's put the remote onto the camera. We're gonna keep everything as is. So the flash is gonna naturally go into high speed sync, and we're gonna take the exact same shot that we did just a second ago with that flash. Now looking at that, I like it, right? We're getting that nice rim light, the hair light, um, and that kind of edging on the body. There's only a couple issues though. Number one, I'm getting quite a bit of light spill onto the wall itself. So I don't really want that much of that light hitting the brick wall. But the second thing is my camera angle right now is almost going directly into that flash. This is where the barn door is fantastic because maybe you do wanna use that flash for a little bit of a flare to kind of lower contrast and create an effect, but maybe you don't. So what I'm gonna do is actually open this up to a nice little rectangular pattern and this is what's gonna prevent it from flaring into the camera. With that on, I love how easy everything attaches these days. This magnetic stuff is fantastic. 
Okay, we're gonna aim it right there. And I'm gonna take the exact same shot again. You're gonna see that subtle little difference. Beautiful, I love that. Now I love the light, kind of how subtle it is right now. But if I wanted to, I might just raise it up one stop and just see if I want a little bit more light. Now I'm looking at that, I kind of like it more on the subtle side. But when you compare with no light, with that flash added with that barn door, what you're getting is this nice subtle edging on the hair. We get hair detail, we get edging on the body, and it just adds a bit of shape and dimension to the shot. For me personally, it adds a lot of refinement to the image, even though we're not making significant changes. Personally, I love this style of lighting. And why don't we summarize everything we've talked about? So number one, we had the grid. The grid is a fantastic tool, not only for just using the light pattern creatively, directly on your subject, but I like using it to kind of add highlights so I can accentuate things in the edit. Number two, we had the snoot. You can think of your snoot like a grid on steroids, right? It's gonna punch in, create a circular pattern, which again, you can use directly like we've done in this shoot, or we can use it more subtly like we did here to create a pattern on the wall using the tree as a gobo or a go-between object. And last, number three, we have the barn door. Barn door is fantastic for kind of that in-between. You're gonna get more flash power with the ability to still kind of direct and control that light. That's it for us, hope you guys enjoyed. We're gonna link up all the gear that we use in the description of the video. We're also gonna link up Sabrina so you guys can find her on Instagram. Sabrina's actually gonna be touring with Hamilton next week in Hawaii, which by the time this is released, she will be in Hawaii. So check out Hamilton too. Meantime, we'll see you guys back here in the next video. Peace.